Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor. And as you saw from the cold open of this video, I went ahead and patched the other side of that front apron. Now I got caught in the middle of a um, service ticket that came in the other day and I couldn't finish the other side. But I actually, having had practice on the other side, once again, it became easy. It was about a 45 minute to one hour ordeal from the time that I had the tools set up until it was done. Uh, I've since coated it down with a little bit of phosphoric acid to let it soak. But what we're going to do from here is we're going to get it attached to the beetle. That's right, Eleanor's about to get her brand new apron attached to the front. But before we can do that, we have to replace a section of the floor that's in here. It's about two and a half, three inches roughly that's missing because the front of this apron on this which was a crashed beetle. This was a 1969 front end that I grafted on the front here. Uh, the front of it was crashed, but it also had some severe rust. There's still about, oh, four or five pinholes in here I need to, to fill in also. But we're gonna extend the piece that goes on here, and then we're gonna attach that apron on the front. Shouldn't be too much to it. You know, I say that now, but I'm probably gonna run into some stupid problem, but I don't know what I could possibly run into. There's not that much to it, there really isn't. As always, check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. Like, comment, subscribe, and check out DuckShit.net forward slash store if you'd like to buy some DuckShit merch. That's right. Unfortunately, this isn't part of it because I really don't want to ruin those shirts, so I got them all inside. I've been wearing them around town when I go to Volkswagen um, functions and people have seen me in them, and everybody likes them. I mean, I've sold a lot of them already. But people keep telling me there's problems with the store, so please hit up duckshit.net floor slash store and just look, even if you don't buy, just look and tell me what you see and tell me if it's working properly, because that's kind of important to me, just to make sure that it works. Some people tell me it's fine, some people tell me they have troubles, but trying to work my way through the bugs and get it straightened out. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. We'll be back right after the intro. All right, down below in here is where we need to add this strip of metal. It's going to be about two and a half, three inches. I think I'm going to fill it roughly to the, um, to the edge that I see over here. The edge, the damn mosquitoes are out in force today for some reason. It's actually been a really, really nice day. Uh, it was about 71 degrees until about noon. Unheard of in Florida this time of year, just completely unheard of. Let's just say I hope it stays like that for the rest of the year. But right now it's probably in the mid-80s. The humidity is kind of low. I got my fan on. You probably can't hear it too well with the... Uh, this microphone that I'm using, but uh, it's actually rather comfortable out here, except for the fact that mosquitoes are enjoying the damn weather too. But I need to uh, to build that strip out a little bit bigger over here than on this side. This side, uh, I was able to cut it on a diagonal so as not to take out too much of the original metal. But yep, we need to replace this strip. I need to see what I've got around in the uh, in the yard that's usable. I'll probably cut something off of a washing machine, or maybe I'll use a piece of Eleanor's uh, old roof. This is about all that's left of the roof anymore. And uh, I could probably cut this and form it and put this into here somehow. It's obviously way too big for what needs to be in there, but it needs to be bent a little anyway. It's already got a little curve stamped into it. Now, of course, in a late model Beetle, the spare tire area is much flatter. On an earlier model Beetle, it comes to a V. So I have to modify this floor a little bit to match the uh, later apron. Freaking bugs are all over me today. If you look at the bottom of this, you see there's actually a little point down in here. So this floor needs to match that. And this metal piece of metal here is probably just fine for what I need to do. Got an awful lot of Bondo on it, though. You know what? Let me see if I got anything else. This is just going to be uh, messy to clean up and make work for this. All right, we'll be back in just a minute. All right, we've got this here, which is a piece of a stove. It's actually the drawer that pulls out from underneath one. I think I can hack this up and make it work. It looks like it's approximately the right width, or at least this piece is anyway. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna work for what I need to do. Let's get this cut down and see if we can make this fit. Thank you. 
Okay, I think we've got this uh, floor put in here pretty good. It's sturdy. It's not attached on the sides yet. In fact, I need to put just a little piece here about the size of my finger in the sides just to make sure that it's nice and tight. But it needs to um, actually bend up a little bit and conform to the curvature of the sides here. But what I've done is I've made a line across here where the apron is approximately going to meet it with about half of an inch of overlap in the bottom there. So I think that'll work out just fine. I'm not seeing that as being an issue. Once I've got that in there, I'll put the apron under it, pull it up, and then bend it into place. And then with a body hammer, gently wrap it to where it needs to be, and then spot weld it all the way along. I think the tangs on my spot welder should be able to reach around that. If they don't, then uh, well, I'll just make a bunch of spots with my MIG welder. Let's finish tearing this thing up. All right, I think this is the first time that it's had a floor in the trunk since I first got the car. <laughs> when I got it, there wasn't a trunk in here at all. Yeah, this is gonna work out okay. Push the apron onto where it needs to be. I can spot it into place. And then I can push down on the floor, clamp the two together, and then spot along the edge here and get that wrapped up. You know, I was worried about making little pieces to go down here in the corners, but it looks like I don't have to, that the front apron actually provides that piece you see what I mean? There's virtually no hole over here that needs to be concerned with. I could just patch that up with the welder and be done with it. But we're looking really, really good. Okay, next step is to get that apron on there to where it needs to be. And uh, actually it's pretty close to where it needs to go. It needs to go up a little bit on the left or maybe down a little bit on the right. In fact, it needs to go in more. It's not even on all the way. Got to get some clamps on it, put it into place, but uh, it's almost where it needs to be. Almost, almost. 
All right, let me get some clamps out, make some adjustments. We'll start tacking that sucker on, and uh, we're getting somewhere. This is good news. All right, this is going to be a good test for my microphone because right now, not only is my fan on, but the neighbor's running his lawnmower, and there's a party going on next door. So uh, <laughs> there's all kinds of racket. I don't even know if the microphone's picking it up. I'm looking at the VU meter here on the screen, and I don't see it moving because of the music. I see a little bit of a rumble from the fan, but that's it. Anyways, we've got the uh, front aping clamped on here, and it's looking pretty good. The fender is going to bolt on like this, so it'll come forwards a little bit. It doesn't actually sit back that far. When I weld it in, I'm going to run it along the sides here. I'm going to leave these fenders on, so that way I can get the alignment of the apron correct because to align the apron, you want to align it to the bottom of the fenders. You want to align it to the top over here because it's a V shape. If you put it too high, it's going to fall to the inside of the V. If you put it too low, it'll fall to the outside of the V. So it's very obvious. You just drop it down until it slots into place. But these are pretty easy, but it's, it's a little easy to make it a little bit crooked. In which case I actually lined up this line with this line by taking a few steps back and eyeballing it and it's uh almost where it needs to be it's damn near perfect i'm going to call that acceptable um it's probably within the tolerances of the original volkswagen manufacturing plant so yeah i'm going to go with it i'm going to go with it i'm happy with that inside here we've got the clamp which is holding the floor which is normally square and flat to the bottom of this v shape so it's pinching it and pushing it down in doing that the floor got stretched because it was used to being flat so it's gotten pulled and as a result it shortened and <laughs> the uh, tolerance on that is pretty damn close that's pretty close wow if I made that floor about another half an inch shorter it, it probably they would have missed so I think we're good I think we're really good so I got a couple of tacks there in the middle and I'll move the clamp and clamp it over here on the sides to pinch that down the same way. Get some welds put in on the top here and then we'll run our way up around the sides. I had been asked, am I worried or concerned with welding so close to the fenders? And to be honest, fiberglass is pretty heat resilient. I mean, I wouldn't try to hold a lighter or a blowtorch to it. You're, you're gonna pick it up then. But in the instance that I'm welding close to it, I, I can put something up in the fender over here to keep it away like that. And the radiant heat isn't enough to do any damage to the uh, fiberglass fender. So it's, that's not going to be an issue. I'm not the least bit worried about it. So we're good. We are good. Well, I don't know how well the camera is going to get into some of these areas to do any filming. But, well, we'll try wedging it in there and see what we can get out of it anyway. Matter of fact, I don't think I ever shut off the time lapse from earlier. <laughs> All right, I'll shut it off now. Let's go ahead and get this thing uh, welded in. I want to get this, this done today. There's not much left. This is very, very possible. getting there down inside I've got about oh I don't know yeah, about three dozen spot welds all the way across the bottom I didn't even bother grabbing my spot welder just looking at this I could tell the uh, tongs were not going to fit around this absolutely not but I've got all the clamps off the bottom the floor now has a nice V shape on the bottom so we're good we're good the next thing we need to start getting worried about is the top corners over here which I started to tack when I realized I forgot to set up the camera <laughs> and then I need to run down the side here with about a dozen or so tacks on the outside of the um, 
apron just the same. But uh, it's coming together. I, I think I think we're doing well. We're not far off from completion. There's not too much left to do. Okay. I wonder if I can pull this off since I started putting them tacks in there. Yeah, okay. Woo, it's still a little hot. What I need to do is I need to clamp this spot right here on the edge together. There it is. And then get the weld around through there. Normally on a beetle, and this is going to bother me a little bit, but normally on a beetle you'd see the two layers overlapping each other. Well, actually, it would be this way. It comes down like that. And in my case, I'm... Uh, going to weld along that and then just grind it off so you don't even see it. So it's going to look more perfect than an actual beetle should from 1956. Well, that turned out pretty good. We got everything in there. I missed a couple spots grinding, you know, big deal, right? I missed a spot over here, for example. And I missed a spot behind that fender. I knew when I put the bolt into it that I missed a spot. But I ran along the bottom of it. There was a little bit of loose um, welding wire that came through, you know, about an inch or two, in a couple spots that need to be touched up. Uh, you know, look what the uh, cat piss does. It actually turns the older Volkswagen metal a slightly grayer color a darker gray color than it does the new metal. So it makes it look a little bit different. We're gonna let that soak, of course, overnight. See what it looks like in the morning. That big sticker that's been there for two years, I finally, <laughs> finally got up to taking it off. And I didn't want to come off with anything except sanding it off. So anyway, I sanded that right off of there and uh, that's another spot I need to hit with some phosphoric acid. But uh, we're wrapping it up for today. This, uh, this turned out pretty good. It's nice and solid, you know, that's the best part. I could actually pick the car up by it. So yeah, once again, the uh, front end is now built up the way it needs to be. I'm very happy with what we got turned out and I hope you are too. So for those of you that are watching, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly that way you get updates every time that I upload a new video. I'm gonna snap the thing right back here in the tripod so that way I can go hands-free mode. There we go. <laughs> Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. If you haven't yet bought a shirt or some other merch, you need to at least look at my store. Check out duckshit.net forward slash store. You can have a look at all the different designs that I've got. It's about four different shirt designs. Again, I'm not wearing them today because they're brand new shirts. I don't want to ruin them. Uh, <laughs> I probably should just order a whole bunch of them and, and have a couple of beaters that I wear for when I'm working out in the garage. And now that I'm thinking out loud and saying that, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So watch for that probably next week. Um, I have a few more proofs coming. So a few more examples are arriving. In fact, they're sitting in my mailbox right now. I'm going to go pick them up. But uh, again, for those of you that haven't 
check out the store, hit up duckshit.net forward slash store, and at least tell me if it's working. Some people are reporting that there's been errors or that they're seeing the wrong thing or that there's no products listed on it. So just look, please have a look and tell me what you see. And I don't want just like one person to look, I want like people from all over the world just to check it out. And tell me what you see when you hit the store. I think that about wraps it up. So thanks you guys for watching, really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully tomorrow, being that it's a day off, we're gonna attack the driver's side door hinges. And uh, I just might get it done in one day. You heard it here first. Uh, of course, I'll believe it when I see it, and maybe you will too. I mean, it took 10 videos to get them right on the uh, passenger side, so <laughs> here's hoping I can do the driver's side in one video now that I'm an expert. Anyways, once again, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.